news coming out of Indianapolis today if you're a Colts fan. Jason LaConfora joining the show right now, CBS Sports, breaking news that Carson Wentz is going to be out 5 to 12 weeks. Uh, Jason, what does this mean for the Colts moving forward? It means a lot of Jacob Eason in the short term, that's for sure. Um, it, it means the odds of them having to send a one back to uh, Philadelphia as part of the Wentz trade, which is obviously predicated on him taking at least 70% of the snaps. Um, I, I would say that seems highly unlikely at this point. Um, you know, for Carson Wentz, it's, it's just more questions about the, the, the durability and, and his body, where he is at this point in his career, what he can get back to realistically. I know this is sort of emanating from an, an injury that happened maybe as far back as high school, but, but the reality is he, he's had to endure a number of procedures now in a short period of time, and we're now talking a, a, a long period of time removed from him being at the top of his game when he looked like he was going to be you know, one of the top six, eight, ten quarterbacks in this league for a long time. Uh, obviously, it continues a run of bad luck, excuse the pun, for Chris Ballard, um, since he took over as general manager there, and and you know Andrew Luck's career ending sort short sooner than anybody anticipated, um, and now they continue to sort of play QB roulette, and it certainly could be a precursor to a transaction at some point. I wouldn't expect anything right away, but at some point, depending on how things go through camp and and maybe um, a preseason game or so. You don't like to bring in a, a, a quarterback this late in the game, but we've seen teams do it, right? We saw Minnesota make a big trade uh, for Sam Bradford when Teddy Bridgewater had a horrific injury years ago. Um, and so maybe there is something out there for the Colts at some point. A lot of people will say Nick Foles. I don't think that's the direction that they probably want to go. I, personally, I'd be looking at a Gardner Minshew, something like that. If I were going to make a trade in terms of age and upside um, and what you'd have to pay the guy. Um, but for now, it, they're going to really sink in and, and see what Jacob Eason can do. Jason Lockenfora joins the show, CBS Sports NFL insider. Ben Lyons in for Rich on the Rich Eisen Show. I saw your tweet just now, Jason, and, and your timeline feels a little different than the one Brockman and I were coming up with. Before you jumped on, Chris and I were trying to do the math, and we said, okay, we're probably going to come back November 1st. You're talking about eight months. Are we going to see him on the football field at all this season? Did I say months? I meant weeks. If I said months, it was a it was a mistake. Multitasking. No, I think eight weeks. Two two months. Eight weeks is is what we're probably. I mean, look. When they say five to twelve weeks, it's it's not going to be five. You know, that's just not how it goes. Um, and especially with he just you know like yeah he was there for the spring but i mean he had just started practicing and i know he's been with frank reich before but he didn't even really get to to put his base on yet before this happened so you know you're you're talking about a guy who now has to go on the shelf for a while it's not like uh he's going to come back 3 days after surgery have a practice and you know what i mean and yeah. play play the next week so no i i think you're looking at 8 8 weeks 2 months Probably at a minimum. Like I, I can't imagine this doesn't bleed um, well into the regular season. And, and the best case scenario, and, and you're also look. This is somebody who has a big contract. Um, this is somebody who has dealt with a lot of setbacks in the past. So a, as much as you'd like to get him back as soon as possible, um, they're, they're not going to be you know trying to do anything warp speed because he may be a guy who still is a part of your future beyond this year if 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 you think he's still who you thought he could be when you made the trade so yeah i think conservatively if they're saying you know five weeks to three months you're, you're going to be looking at at least a couple of months what's crazy jason is if i'm an eagles fan this morning i'm so upset because of the the clause on the the trade regarding the draft pick He's making the Eagles worse still. He's still hurting the Eagles. How is that possible? Stuff stuff happens. <laughs> stuff happens. Um, it's just it, it's just the reality. The reality of, of being football. an Eagles fan. You know what I, I mean? Like it, it I, I mean, I don't think you can look at it that way as an Eagles fan. I, I mean I get why why you might, but like 
there's a reason that the trade went down the way it did, right? It, it's because of everything that's transpired with him physically and, and what he played like last year. So, like, the Eagles can't make that trade banking on that one. No, I mean, that one has to be earned in part through luck and in part through productivity um, and, and just through health. So... It's just really remarkable that if you're an Eagles fan, you're sitting sitting here today saying, wow, we're continuing to not get better because of Carson Wentz. <laughs> but, like, Carson Wentz needing a procedure, is that shocking to people? At this of course point? not. No, of course That's not. Why it's part of the reason he's he's not there, right? It's it's part of the reason he hasn't lived up to the contract. It's, it's part of the reason that outside of the Colts, that, you know, it's not like there was this super robust Carson Wentz market. Availability is a skill set, Jason, that is often overlooked in sports and in life. How does this impact the rest of the teams in, divi- in the division, uh, not just in terms of uh, a possible trade scenario or anything like that, but just in terms of where the balance of power is now in the AFC? I, for me personally, it's Tennessee and everybody else, and it was that way before. Now, I, I thought the Colts were the team that – um, because of their ability to, to play some defense, especially if they can get Darius Leonard back and sign long term, and their ability to run the ball, and I, and I know they lost, you know, their their left tackle, and there's some change there, but I still think up front that's a formidable unit that they built. So, you know, they were the next best team. I, I don't know what Carson Wentz was going to do. You know, I, I don't know that anyone could say they had built a model that told them with absolute certainty what a 2021 Carson Wentz was going to look like in terms of games played. And, you know, yards, touchdowns, everything else. So, I, I mean, I, I think they were um, a, a bit of a wild card before, and, and they still are now. Um, and then the other two, come on. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah, Jacksonville and Houston have a ways to go. So, I don't know that it necessarily swings the balance of, of power. Um, I think certainly they, they probably – emphasize running the ball and, and sort of going a little more old school even more than, than they may have previously or, or might have under Wentz. But I, I don't, I don't I'm like, I have no idea what a full Carson Wentz season would look like. And, and again, I don't know that you can bake into your cake a full Carson Wentz season. No, clearly not. Jason Lockenfora joins the show, CBS Sports NFL Insider. With everything going on right now, Jay, in the world of sports with NBA free agency and the Olympics and baseball down the, 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 you know, the, the home stretch of the pennant race, I think we kind of forgot that there's a Hall of Fame game this week. T.J. Jefferson yeah, well, didn't forget. This weekend, oh, no. So they certainly are, they haven't forgotten there. They were in pads two straight days. Um, I, I was at Saturday's practice. Uh, it was you know, they were in Heinz Field, I don't know, probably about twelve, fifteen thousand 15,000 people there. So it was cool. Uh, it was a football festival. And, and uh, yeah, the, they obviously will be the first ones to play. The Cowboys, both those teams dealing with some health issues. Uh, the first string Pittsburgh offensive line that I saw Saturday, whoo-wee. Now, you know, there were at least three projected starters who are dealing with middling injuries or just getting a veteran's day off. But regardless, um, sussing out that offensive line is clearly priority number one for them right now. No, TJ's hype being a Cowboys fan because that's all they have is hype. Is there any meat on the bone for the Cowboys this year? Because it's a lot of hype. It's like a A easy album. We don't know when it's going to come out, if it's going to be good. There's a lot going on. It's usually not. It's like the hype man is better than the artist themselves. You know, that's – and Jerry's usually the hype man, and it's usually out there in Oxnard, and, you know, everybody's fired up, and, man, we look good, and we're – look at this roster, and, you know, and then it leads, you know, somewhere between seven and nine wins. Um, I just don't buy the defensive side of the ball with them still. Um, the situation with Dak is less than ideal. Um, with him having to miss any time – after all the time he's missed. You know, a lot of people are selling Zeke's back. He's going to be dominant. I I don't know. I, I think they're kind of where Pittsburgh was a year ago with the offensive line. Sometimes father time comes like for a bunch of guys at once in a position group. And age, injury, it all kind of conspires against you. And, and I just don't know that they're going to get their best five out there with the consistency that they're going to need. Um 
So, yeah, I have reservations about the Cowboys. Well, it's crazy, Jason, when you look at that entire division, there's not one team I can really wrap my arms no. around and celebrate and no. get excited for, and especially the Philadelphia Eagles. The news coming out that Devontae Smith is expected to miss two to three weeks with a sprained MCL. Brockman was freaking out because Jalen Hurts was ranked on some preseason pre-draft board as like a top 10 fantasy quarterback. Let's talk real football, though. What's happening in Philadelphia? And forget just losing out on the draft pick from Carson Wentz. Well, I mean, look, they're, they're not ready to um, anoint Jalen. I, I think there's a lot of quality clay there to mold. And I, I was impressed more often than not by what I saw him do a year ago under duress. But there there are movers and shakers there. You know, they're not a a front office and an ownership group that tends to sit still. So, yeah, they'll they'll be – they have been and they will continue to evaluate any and every quarterback situation that might give them an opportunity to upgrade. And there's obviously um, significant mitigating circumstances with the the, the Deshaun Watson situation – but um, they, they are not ready to say we absolutely have the guy while, while they are entertaining that idea and, and wanting to, to be, you know, would love for that to be proven true. Um, but, yeah, the division, I don't know, man. Uh, I lean to WFT because of that defense and because of some of the additions they've made on offense that I think will just provide a, a, a baseline um, and because they have a lot of guys who are young, you know, Gibson hasn't been a running back that long. Logan Thomas hasn't been a tight end that long. But for what they've already showed, small sample size, um, and without having the Haskins thing and all the stuff they were dealing with a year ago, I, te- I, I leaned to them before the COVID situation. And now I, I take a step back because if at this point they're still dealing what they're dealing with, having a coach who's, you know, a cancer survivor and potentially immunocompromised, um, and and him being as sort of out front and honest, almost begging these guys to to do the right thing, and still not enough of them have that. You know, I'm not. Gonna, I can't look at that and say that that portends greatness. Now, maybe that those numbers will change drastically here in the in the near future, um, but I, I think it would be naive to pretend that COVID, you know, is not going to play any role in this season because it, it already is. Jason Lockenfora joins the show, CBS Sports NFL insider. Kind of look at him as a dual threat around here, like an Antoine Randall L or a Cordell Stewart. It can do a little bit of everything because in addition to being an insider on American football, you have a passion for football around the world. I know you're I a big do. soccer guy. Uh, I was bummed out last night to see the women lose in the Olympics, but the men won in the Gold Cup. What does this win mean for the United States men's soccer program? Um, I mean, look, long term, I, I don't think you can look at this Nations Cup and even this Gold Cup, given where it is on the calendar and what else was going on, and especially for teams um, that, that are participating in the Olympics, the men didn't qualify, and say that it's – I mean, these are, these are money grabs for, for – you know, for CONCACAF and, and, for, and for FIFA. I, I, the, so I'm not going to go crazy about it. it. They're putting together results, and they're building what seems to be a winning culture. Um, I have reservations about Greg Berhalter and some of what's going on, but, but they seem to continue to come out the other side of it with a result. But this group taking part in, in, in the Gold Cup, God willing, health, you know, good health, would provide that come September and World Cup qualifying, the group playing those games looks drastically different than the group that endured the Gold Cup. Um, but they're they're getting results. Beating Mexico is something you have to always celebrate. Uh, and I just hopefully will continue to see a pipeline of our best young talent getting to Europe as quickly as possible because there is no substitute for the kind of competition in practice uh, and for the match day squad that comes over there. It's it's just not the same here, and it won't be for a long time. See, that's how you know Jason's a real soccer fan and student of the game. United States wins the Gold Cup. He's like, eh, I need to see more. No, I'm, I'm, not the I, real, I, I like it. it. I, it I like the, the tempered like, excitement. I was happy as hell. Like, it's, it's awesome. But I think you have to view some of these tournaments and, and the teams as they're sort of presently comprised for what it is. 
No, I, I appreciate the insight. And, and like we said earlier, availability is everything. And the United States soccer team on the men's side is going to have a much different roster when it competes for a World Cup. We appreciate you taking some time, Jay. My pleasure, man. Have a great afternoon. Thank Jason you. Jason Lockenfora, CBS Sports NFL insider. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.